So the topic today is going to be solving the flash calculation. More specifically, the flash calculation can be constrained by two factors. The two constraints on the flash calculations are the equilibrium constraint and the material balance constraint. Now the goal of each of these two constraints is that we want to try to drive this down near equilibrium or to equilibrium. While for the material balance, we want to try to drive this little arrow here towards zero. Mathematically, the two constraints can be written as the sum over all the vapor fractions yi has to be equal to the sum of all the liquid fractions xi, which has to be equal to one. That's the material balance. We can rewrite this in the following way. A sum for all the components of the yi minus the xi, which has to be equal to zero. This is the equation we're going to be using. For the equilibrium constraint, we'll use the following equation that the fugacity for the vapor phase of a component i has to be equal to the fugacity of the liquid phase for the same component i. This has to be true for all components. There are, in essence, two methods to solve the flash. So for the first one, we solve both constraints at the same time, leaving us with two n parameters, xi and yi, that we have to solve at the same time. An example of this is given by the solution by Keith Coates. The second approach solves for one parameter, fv, in an inner loop, and nc parameters, which are the k values, in an outer loop. This is the most common method to solve. Examples of this is given by people like Mikkelsen and Aaron Zick. And this is the one we're going to be looking at in the next couple of weeks. So the question is, how do we relate the following variables, ki, fv, with the constraint that the sum of the components of yi minus xi has to be equal to zero? Where we should start is that we say that we know that if we have the total amount of moles of a component i, that has to be equal to the amount of moles in the vapor phase of component i plus the amount of moles in the liquid phase of component i. And using the definition of the amount of moles uh, of component i in the vapor and liquid fraction as follows, we can derive the following expression, where in this equation, fv is defined in the following way. Using this first equation, together with the definition of the k-value given by the k-value is equal to the yi over the xi, and putting that into our constraint given up here, it's possible to derive the following equation. And it has to be equal to zero at the solution. This equation is what we're going to be calling the ratchet rice equation. And as you'll see, it wasn't actually first discovered by ratchet rice It was discovered by Musket and McDowell. And this is going to be our inner loop in the flash solver. So what does this equation look like if we change fv as a dynamic variable? In this interactive plot, what we've done is we've added a composition of a binary system. So we have our light component, ZL, and our heavy component, ZH, which is just 1 minus the light component. We can change the input for this as we want. We also have the k values for the light and the heavy component uh, as shown here. These can also be changed. By just writing out the ratchet rice equation, we get the following curve. Ooh, that looks scary. The first thing we're going to take a look at is we have two sets of asymptotes here with these black dashed lines. And what you can show is that the only solution that we actually care about is going to be within these two asymptotes. The question then is what happens when we change the composition and the k values? Let's start with the composition. If we decrease the composition, you see that the curve shifts over to the left. And the solution is going to be where this function here is equal to zero. If we increase the composition of the light component, you see the solution goes to the right towards a higher fv. So what happens if we change our k values? If we change the light k value and we decrease it, you'll see that the left bound is being shifted to the left. And as we increase it, uh, it'll tend towards zero as an upper bound. So what happens when we change the heavy k value? If we decrease it, you see it tends towards one. If we increase it, you'll see it goes out to a higher and higher value of fv. That's a little bit of a look at the ratchet rice equation and how it changes with the different uh, input parameters, which is the composition set i and the k values of each component. And the goal of the ratchet rice equation is to find this point where it's equal to zero.